Hello my lovely Misfitians and welcome back to another video. So this is the second video of a series that I'm creating where we are learning how to paint a snowy watercolor painting with a leaping deer in the background. Now, if you haven't watched the first video in the series, I will make sure to link that down below. That particular video, we went over prepping your workstation and also prepping this painting before we even get into the actual painting process. And that is a very crucial skill. So please make sure to pause this video. I will be here when you come back and watch that one first. That being said, once again, if you want this particular drawing that I'm going to be using in this painting to play around with yourself, there is a link down below where I have included this particular drawing inside a course where I teach you how to stretch your watercolor paper. And that is another skill that is very crucial, I feel like, for this painting. So I just wanted to let all of you know. Now that all the business is aside, let's go ahead and jump into how to paint the background of our painting. And our very first step to learning how to paint a snowy background is which hand do you paint with? Do you paint with your right hand or do you paint with your left hand? This is actually going to affect how you approach your painting. So since I am right-handed, I want to make sure when I'm starting my painting process that I try and start on the left side of my painting. The reason why I do this is because I don't want to be laying my hand in wet paint. And by starting on the left side and then slowly moving towards the right, I'm going to keep my hand out of whatever I have been working on. Now, sometimes you can't always follow this rule, but if you can, it is so helpful. So try and move from the left to the right if you're right-handed and from the right to the left if you are left-handed. Now that we have developed our plan of attack for this painting, let's go ahead and go on to the next stage, which is prepping our paint. Since I know I'm going to be painting large washes over a large area to help keep things as simple as possible, I am just going to be using one paint color for my background wash, and that is going to be Payne's Gray. Now, looking back at my drawing and kind of planning out where I want this Payne's Gray to be located, I'm realizing I'm going to need a lot of paint. So instead of working inside of my palette, I first off want to use fresh paint and I want to actually use it in a ceramic bowl. The reason why I want to do this is because first off, I want to try and mix up a large quantity of the same consistency of paint to water ratio inside of this bowl that I can use for the entire painting. So for those of you who have taken my paint ratio course, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're interested in that course, I'll link it down below. But basically what I'm going to be mixing up in this bowl is an inky water consistency of Payne's Gray. And this particular consistency is going to allow me to lay down a smooth, flat wash in pretty much only one layer. So I want this really dark, intense color the first time I lay down my paint. Another reason why I want to mix it inside of a bowl is because I don't want to have to remix up this color midway through the painting. It's always very difficult to remix up the same consistency of paint that you had the previous time, especially when you're doing a large background wash 
for this particular painting, I wanted a smooth, solid color so it wouldn't be distracting from my deer. And as a result, that means I'm going to need to mix up a large quantity of paint. Now, once I have that all mixed up, you can go ahead and start approaching the actual painting process of your background sky. Once again, I'm going to be working from left to right since I am painting with my right hand. And the first section that I'm going to paint is that far left side. And since that's kind of a little bit of a smaller area, I'm only going to need a medium kind of to large round brush. I'm going to be using size 12 to fill up this area. And I'm going to continue to paint one by one the little shapes that are around this tree. Now, if you have any excess paint that is spilling over onto your masking fluid or even onto that masking tape, you're gonna wanna pick that up because if you leave little puddles of paint on that masking fluid or on that masking tape, it's going to spill back into your paint and create watery blotches, which we don't want. After you have those three little shapes done around your masked out tree, the next thing that you're going to want to do is paint those little branches that are up at the top and fill those all the way in with Payne's Gray. Once you have those areas painted, you're going to want to make sure you dry those thoroughly. And the way you can test whether something is dry or not is touching the back of your hand to the paper. And if it feels cool to the touch, that means it's still wet. It might be slightly damp, but it is still wet. And you want to make sure that paper feels room temperature before you move on to the next step. And here is where I had my first little goof, I will say. If you watched the first video, you know what I'm talking about. I really should have masked this particular tree, this little tree in the front, um, but I didn't. <laughs> and so what I'm going to be doing is painting around it. However, it would have been a lot easier if I just masked this tree. So learn from my mistakes and mask this little tree out and then paint around it and it will be a lot easier. <laughs> okay, so once you have those little sections painted that are around that small tree that I should have masked out, um, the next part is actually going to be the hardest part for keeping a flat, smooth wash. And if you're able to keep it, then great. If not, just take it as watercolor has its own texture and it does its own thing and that's fine. It's a background sky. It could be the Milky Way in the background. It's not that big of a deal, but basically what you're going to do since we're working over a larger section, we're going to switch between two brushes. So when you're closer up to those branches and that small tree, you're going to want to be painting with a size 12 round brush or whatever feels comfortable to you. You can even go a little bit further down in size if that feels a little bit more comfortable. But as you're getting closer to those branches, you want to use the smaller round brush. And then when you're getting into the more larger open sky area, you need to use a large wash brush or sometimes I've heard of it as a large flat brush. I've heard it kind of interchange between the two, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> but on the website when I bought this, it said it was a wash brush that was two inches in diameter. But then also on another website, it said it was a flat inch, a flat brush that was two inches. So I'm not really sure which one it's supposed to be called. <laughs> But that being said, you basically need a very large brush for this particular section if you want it to 
have a smoother finish. And this is the reason why we masked everything earlier to help ease our ability to paint a smooth wash in the background. Now, the next thing that you're going to be seeing me do is trying to paint around those branches. So before when we were painting, those branches were a positive shape, but now I'm treating them as if they're a negative shape. And by creating this kind of line between the two, you're going to notice that branch start to really pop off the page around our darker sky. And I really, really love this effect. This is an easy way to do negative painting and kind of play around with it. So just make sure that you don't paint over those branches, but you paint around them this time. Now you're going to notice that I'm going to be adding some kind of washes of Payne's Gray at the bottom that are going to kind of look like clouds. I did not plan to do that. This is an oops because basically my paint was drying faster than when I was laying it down. And it was basically because I was trying to work around that tree that I should have masked earlier. So mistakes happen and that is perfectly fine. But basically when that happens, think creatively and try and think of ways, hmm, could I add a cloud here? Could I maybe add just a little bit of line or wisp of an accent of maybe wind or something like that? Think about how you can use texture to your advantage. So in this case, I was like, this is turning out darker than what my wash is on the side because that has dried and this one is fresh paint. So the way to alleviate that is I'm going to create a cloud at the bottom. And I think it worked out really well, but I wanted to share with you my mistakes and let you see that sometimes paintings don't go as planned and that's perfectly fine. Just allow the paint to kind of do what it wants to and then slightly change course with it as you go. And once you get done with your kind of first wash of that Payne's Gray over all the areas as seen, go ahead and touch up any areas that you feel like need to be touched up. I noticed a couple of areas that dried lighter than other areas. And so basically what I did is I waited until they were completely dry as a tip wait until your paint is completely dry. Don't try and kind of play around with it while it's still wet, because what you're going to end up doing is actually lifting and picking up paint and actually making it worse. So it's better to allow it to completely dry, which is why I hit this painting with a heat gun real quick and made sure it was dry completely and then started tweaking and painting over the areas that I felt like needed to be darkened up a bit. Another thing that you're going to see me do a lot in this painting is using Q-tips. And this is actually a supply that I love to have on handy and close by because Q-tips are really great for first off picking up small puddles of paint. You can actually do this with a brush, but I find it's easier to pick it up with a Q-tip. So I am not touching the paper. It's really kind of hard to see, but I'm actually touching the top portion of a puddle that is on my paper. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want puddles of paint on my paper because those are going to create watery textures. Eventually that water is going to evaporate and lighten those particular areas where my wash is. And I don't want that. So what I'm trying to do is lift up any excess paint that might be on my paper. And a lot of times I do that with a Q-tip. Another thing that is very important for this particular painting is making sure each layer is dry before you go to the next. So you're going to be seeing me use a heat gun and a blow dryer a lot. So why am I interchanging between the heat gun and the blow dryer? I feel like the blow dryer actually does a better job, to be honest, of drying the paper, but the blow dryer spreads out the air over a larger area. And I feel like I don't have as much control of where that air goes. Whereas the heat gun, I feel like has a really good control over exactly where I want that hot air to go. 
So when I'm using the blow dryer, I'm usually trying to dry a large area that I don't really care where the heat is hitting my paper, but I'll pull out the heat gun when I want to just target a smaller area. That being said, <laughs> if you only own a hairdryer, just use a hairdryer. <laughs> There's really not a huge difference, but personally, I like the control of having both, especially when I'm doing large paintings like I am here. Okay, now for the fun stuff. We've got our first wash pretty much done of our Payne's Gray. Now, if you feel like you've kind of lost those pencil lines while you were painting over that first wash, before you even start painting, go ahead and pencil those back in to kind of help you figure out where those shapes are so that you can paint around them as you're seeing me do here. Once again, you're going to be working with that inky consistency of Payne's Gray that we have in our bowl. However, since we're laying on top of an already painted layer of Payne's Gray, it's going to appear a lot darker. And once again, you're just doing a basic wash around that shape. And what's going to end up happening is that tree is going to pop out of your painting and create a really cool effect. Once you have those sections painted, make sure to hit them again, those wet areas with either a blow dryer or a heat gun. I prefer the heat gun because I'm only working on one side of the paper and you're going to make sure that it is completely dry. And then we're going to mix up a watery consistency of Payne's gray on a palette. You're going to see me do it here. And we're going to paint that tree that I should have masked a lot earlier. <laughs> And after you have that little tree fully painted with a smooth wash, you're then going to take the same color and paint the tree trunk of that other tree. You're going to see me do it right here and paint all the way down that tree, just like so. Now, one thing that I like to do personally is I always like to lay my washes down dry. So for this tree trunk, I laid it dry, my paint on dry paper, but then while it was wet, I added or dabbed my paintbrush at the top of the tree trunk and just dabbed in a little bit of extra paint to the top to create more of a gradient going down and basically create a shadow at the top of that tree. And I did this by basically doing a wet and wet technique. So that is usually how I like to do wet and wet. I like to first kind of lay down a light color and then dab in more paint to an area that I want darker. And by doing it that way, it creates kind of a smooth gradient. And I kind of did the same thing to the branches to add shadows in. So basically I wet the branch with a very light tone of that Payne's gray. And then I just dabbed my paintbrush in areas that I felt like would have a darker shadow. And that's what created more of that smooth gradient look with the color that was there.
Now, after you get with, done with that, make sure to once again, dry everything all again, and then take your ink consistency that we were using earlier, and we're going to paint that tree that's at the very, very edge of the paper, super dark black. And basically this is a little bit thicker of a consistency of, it's basically an ink consistency, but it's a little tad bit thicker. And you can really see the difference as we're starting to paint that color down. Basically I want this to look almost a silhouette dark since it's kind of hidden in the woods. And once again, when you're done, go ahead and hit that painting with a heat gun and make sure it's completely dry once again before we go on to the next stage. And the next thing that I recommend doing is removing all of that masking tape that's on the edge of your paper. We don't need that anymore because we're actually going to be painting that section next. And you can go ahead and remove all the masking fluid that's over the mountains. Now we want to leave the masking fluid still on our stars and on our deer and also on that tree. So once you're done with that, the next thing that you're going to want to do is add masking fluid to the bottom of that tree trunk that you see here, because basically we don't want to worry about painting around that. We just want to mask it up so that it's super easy for us to paint a nice smooth flat wash over our snow. And I think that is it for this particular video. That is basically your background for this painting. In the next video, I'm going to be going over the mountains and also the snow that is in the foreground of this painting, as well as that tree, how to kind of add the texture to it. So that is something for you to look forward to. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this video as we progress along. Once again, please leave comments down below letting me know what other things you would maybe like for me to teach in the future. I'm making a list um, from your comments, so that is super helpful for me. And if you wanna follow me on Instagram and know kind of what I'm doing throughout the week, make sure to go do that as well. Lots of love y'all and I will see you in the next video.